Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to a new video on the channel. And today, guys, here we are for another AFL 2022 season review. And in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Collingwood's 2022 AFL season. And of course, Collingwood, we do know them for being a history breaking side in 2022, and they went well above people's expectations. And um, yeah, they are, they are the third team to be done, as they were the last team to be eliminated before the grand final happened. So the third team to be done, or the third last team to be done in the series. Let's go ahead and see what's in today's episode. So as per usual, we'll be going over the ladder position, which is their home and away ladder position, and then the ladder position after the order of elimination. Recapping the season, highlights, best win, good players, low lights, worst loss, what's next, trade period and coaching. Again, another massive trade period for them. Recapping final words. Now, good players, let's just state one out there straight away. Nick Dacos, he was the rising star winner. Fantastic season for the Pies so far this year, and he's going to be an absolute gun. So Collingwood... They finished fourth by the end of the home and away season. 16 and 6 was their record with a points number of 64 and a percentage of 104.3. And uh, yeah, they finished fourth, which was really good for them. And then third with the order of elimination. And that could have easily been changed, though. They won so many close games, 13 close games. Or was it like 11 close games in a row or like some something like that? 12 wins by under 11 points or... 12 wins under 12 points. They just were the record. They, they they just were the kings of the close games. So, yes, just went through, count them. That was 11 close wins. 11 close wins under 11 or 12 points it was. So, that, that was crazy. And they started off their season Friday night beating the Saints by 17 points at Marvel. And a very good start to the year, of course, seeing the Dacos brothers both in the same team for the first time. And that was incredible scenes for AFL footy. And then... They comfortably got over the Crows in round two, where the fire alarm went off in that game as well. Uh, interesting scenes there. But, yep, the Pies got job done by 42 points. And then um, Collingwood, I'm not sure if it's a trend, but they did choke a massive choke as well, lost by 30. They had a choke of the, they, they had a lead of 37 points, choked it up to eventual premiers Geelong. Geelong won by 13, thanks to Jeremy Cameron. And then a very disappointing loss to the Eagles by 13 points at Marvel. But they don't play at Marvel. That's the thing, Collingwood. They, they should be playing at the MCG, not Marvel. Uh, and then very, like, not not a win, but lost by seven points in lines at the Gabba, but showed that they, they, they have the guts, they, they have the determination is there. And then their close streak started here. So their first win in their close streak was on Anzac Day against the Bombers by 11 points. And that's where their close wins started to pile on. So that's number one. And then they beat the Suns by 25 in Jack Ginnivan's second epic game because, of course, Anzac Day medalist in the Anzac Day game. Then they lost to Richmond by 27 points. They got thumped by the Dogs by 48. And then they went to Perth and beat the Dockers by 36 points in the wet, kept them to 44. And then this is where the close games start to really come in now. So this is round 11 from here on. It's just close games central for the Pies. They beat Carlton by four. They beat Hawthorne by four. They beat the Demons by 26. That was a strong win for Collingwood. Very strong win. And they always do somehow find a way to get these um, these these big freeze wins as well. But very strong performance by the Pies. 26-point winners. They beat the Giants by 11. Another close win. Suns by five. Another close win. The Roos by seven. A scare, but another close win. Crows by five. Another close win. The Bombers by four after the Siren. Another close win. The Power by six, another close win. The Demons by seven, another close win. And then, of course, they lost to the Swans by 27. And then another close win in round 23 against the Blues by a point. And in the end, that's what knocked Carlton out of the top eight was that. And that's what put them into the top four. So, amazing stuff there for the Pies. But, yeah, go back, look at all these close wins. It was incredible. They just had a season to remember. But, however, in finals... The the ship turned the 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 momentum that they had swayed. They played in two of their three finals. Both of them were close games in under six points, but they couldn't win those games. They lost those two games in the close games. They lost them. So first qualifying final, they lost to the Cats by six points, and it was almost a bit like. This is a taste of your own medicine for Collingwood, really. Uh, but that was a ripping game. That was one of the best games I've ever seen. That was that was a ripping game. Um, and then they comfortably got over the Dockers by 20 points. They just thumped them. And then 
Another close loss to the Pies. They lost by a point to Sydney at the SCG in the preliminary final, which did cost them in the grand final. But Sydney just got too far ahead, and then it was just a little bit too much work, but they did end up coming back and had a chance to win the game. So they had some really memorable wins throughout the year. Carlton round 23 is definitely one as well. And then both times against Melbourne as well. Really big games there as well. Essendon after Soren, that's a strong win. But yeah, I'm going to say the ones against Melbourne and Carlton did mean the most for Collingwood. Uh, and then, yeah, ones against Melbourne and Carlton were their best. So those four were really good. And then, disappointing loss. Definitely to the Swans in round 22 at the SCG. That was a really poor loss. I feel like people expected a little bit more of Collingwood than that, what they did do in round 22 after they'd been so strong throughout the year. That one was a bit of a disappointment for all Collingwood fans there. And um, let's see, is there another one that's a little bit of a disappointment? Definitely the Dogs as well. They also had high hopes for that game too, but that was another disappointment. So a few little dis... Oh, and obviously the Eagles and the Cats as well. So a few disappointing losses for Collingwood, but they had a memorable season. And it was a record-breaking with all those close wins. So, of course, at the start of the video, I touched on Nick Dacos. He's going to be an absolute superstar for the Pies. But now it's going to turn the attention to the trade now. Now, by, this, by the time this video goes out, Collingwood may have completed a few more deals. Ollie Henry looks set to go ahead and join the Cats. They should offer up pick 25 to the Cats. That will get the deal done. I don't see Collingwood refusing that. I feel like that's basically on par. Maybe a tiny bit under, but again, though, sometimes you can't get the perfect pick. Now, again, they want 25 for Grundy. Do we, could we see a three-way trade happen there between the Pies, the Ds, and the Cats, which gets Grundy to Melbourne, Oliver Henry to Geelong, and to Melbourne, like, that, that's something that could very well happen is a three-way trade because that's what Collingwood want, 25 for Grundy. Jacks, um, but you can't like have two 25s. So 27 for the Ds might have to be good enough, especially if they're going to get 25 for Oliver Henry. Could a three way trade happen? Very well. Now, also, Dan McStay joined the Pies as a free agent as well. So they'll be very happy with that inclusion. Now, Bobby Hill is also the other one that came in for calling as well. Another really nice small forward, which will slot in perfectly to their side. Now, also a couple of other trade targets that they are looking at is Tom Mitchell as well. Tom Mitchell from the Hawks. Now, this one looks a lot harder to do now just because of the what the Hawks are going through. They've got Gunston to work through to Brisbane. So I feel like this deal now is probably not going to happen. Fiorini to the Sun uh, to to the Pies from the Suns as well. The Pies perhaps one of the picks they get back from um Henry or Gorn probably overs. But again though again it's going to be interesting to see what the Suns want for Fiorini as well. They're going to be able to work through that a little bit later. But because the Suns have so much on their plate, Rankin, Bose, it is going to be very tough to see a Fiorini deal get done too because deadline day is approaching and not a lot of time left. So. Could the Fiorini deal be the deal that is left out? Perhaps, because it's not going to be on top of their priority list. They've even slotted Rankin further down that priority list as well. Still with Sharp, Rankin, Bose, Fiorini. Still so much more to work through as well, and potentially other pick swaps that they've got to do. Time is running out for Gold Coast, and Collingwood, I reckon, could be the unlucky miss out, because Rankin will get done, Bose will get done. But what about the other deals that the Suns have to work through? Sharp, probably not. Fiorini, probably not. Time is running out. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how that will be playing out. Caleb Poulter is also perhaps linked to a move. Whether he'll go anywhere or not is something else to be um, decided as well. But again, though, they wouldn't. it's not like a massive loss if Caleb Poulter does go out the door. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. See you guys in another video on the channel. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Bye, everyone. Flaming footy out.